Hey everybody, this is Kelly, and welcome back to another episode of Ask a Therapist. So no, it is no longer Pride Month, but there is something that I really want to talk to y'all about, and it's significant enough that it can happen in July. I have a whole list of things that y'all have been asking about that I will get to, but I wanted to make sure to get this video out first as we round out our Pride Month series. This video is about the psychology of coming out. There's an interesting phenomenon that seems to happen at the end of Pride Month where lots of people end up coming out. And I want to take a minute to sort of dive into that and to talk about what that actually means and what that doesn't mean and how if you're an ally, you can be supportive. And if you're a member of the LGBTQIA plus community, you can identify with these people. Or if you're somebody who is not yet sort of self-actualized your sexual identity or sexual orientation or gender identity, then maybe this would help you. The term coming out has become somewhat of a negative term for many people in the community. And much of the reason for that is because it exacerbates or um, just furthers the issue of being non-cisgender or non-heterosexual is shameful and that's why you keep it hidden. That's not why most people keep it hidden. Most people keep it hidden because they're not sure if the people in their life are safe enough to tell about it. It's not that it's shameful. It's not that it's something always that they're dealing with inside of them. It's that they're dealing with the ramifications of it on their relationships. So some people have gone to, instead of saying coming out, they're talking about letting in. And there's other people who talk about telling their truth or revealing themselves or um, there's all different ways to talk about this. And really that's up to the person. For the purposes of this video, I'm just going to keep using the phrase coming out. I just wanted to preface what that phrase actually means for a lot of people. Okay, so myth number one, everyone has to come out. That's not accurate. Because the understanding of the term coming out means for the person who is hiding a portion of themselves to expose that portion of themselves to other people, okay? So the image of coming out of the closet and blah, 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 that, that's where the, the understanding culturally of that term is. And because of that, it's expected on some level that everyone will have either some big public announcement or a big public reveal or, you know, some kind of a statement telling everybody who they are, who they're attracted to. And that's not really necessary for everyone. For some people, they are who they are and they don't want to make a big deal out of it because it's not the most significant part of their personality. For some people, they are who they are and they don't want to have to deal with the negative ramifications in their relationships and they would rather just be able to be who they are and not have to define it, not have to label it, not have to just say it to the world. That's okay. There's no right or wrong way to be you except to be inauthentic to who you are. Make sense? So while somebody might really need to take that step to self-actualize, to be able to publicly say, I am gay, I'm bisexual, I'm a lesbian, I'm transgender, I'm asexual, I'm intersex, I'm wherever in this community you belong, for some people, it's really important they make a public statement so that that's out there and so that they're, that's part of their actualization of self and that's fantastic. There are other people in the community who would really prefer not to have to declare to the public who they are because you don't have to declare if you're part of the majority. So why should they have to? Totally valid. Absolutely understandable. So that myth, everyone has to come out, that's not a thing. So myth number two is you tell your family first. In reality, a lot of it depends on the age at which the person begins to tell people and also the amount to which their family is accepting and affirming and the amount to which their family decides to initiate those conversations. For instance, if you have somebody who notices that their child is gender fluid at a young age, then there's not really an opportunity or a need for that child to come out as gender fluid to their parents. Make sense? So same thing with any type of orientation or identity. If the parents or the family members already know and help the child to develop the language that they need in order to express who they are, then there's no need to tell the family, in which case the coming out process is a lot different. For a lot of people, if they discover who they are as a teenager, they, yes, do tell their families, but a lot of people tell their families last. When you tell them, then it's real. 
when you tell friends, well, friends might move away or, you know, you might have friends with them next year. You might not have any classes together. When that kind of a thing happens, that stuff is always so fluid anyway. I like this person. I like that person. It doesn't define you the way telling your family does. And so that is not something that most people do first. A lot of times it's something that people do last and they get sort of practice in telling other people before they tell their family. Okay, so myth number three is one that I addressed a little bit in last week's video, so I'm not going to go really deeply into it, but the myth is that those in the queer community owe it to heterosexual, cisgender, majority to reveal themselves. I had a situation where people I kind of thought were friends of mine, I found out were pretty mad at me because they felt like I had put them in a bad situation by not defining myself and a relationship in my life. So the falsehood there, and this plays out in a lot of people's lives, is that they felt like they had some sort of right to that information in my life, and they didn't. I owe them nothing. Friends, not friends, family, not family, employers, employees, pe people you meet on the street. I owe you nothing when it comes to telling you about my personal life, unless it actually affects you. And if it doesn't, then it's truly not your business. The last myth that I want to talk a little bit about is the idea that coming out happens one time. More so in the past than necessarily now, there's a lot put behind people's coming out stories. Now, coming out stories can mean a couple of different things depending on your group. I know for some people, a coming out story means how did you tell the first person that you told that you were not straight or that you were not cisgender? For other people, your coming out story is the story of your first sexual encounter in your new reality. And for other people, it's when did you publicly make the statement? It really depends on the person, and so asking for someone's coming out story is a very subjective kind of a thing. The idea that there's ever just one time of revealing this information is a complete falsehood. Every time someone in the community enters into a new situation, there are three things that happen. When you enter into a new situation, there's awareness, maybe subconsciously, often consciously, of the fact that at some point, you will have to deal with whether or not you're going to tell people. After awareness comes assessment. And assessment is very much a pro-con kind of thing. What are the pluses of being honest and what are the negatives of being honest? And for some people, this process goes very quickly. And for some people, this process causes a lot of anxiety. But the assessment, the cost-benefit analysis, that's something that is a very personal thing. Some people aren't in situations where being honest could cost them a job. And other people, if there's a whiff of honesty, they might lose their job or their family of origin. The assessment is a personal thing and the assessment is done in the truest form that that person can be in. After the assessment comes the decision. The decision to either tell someone their truth or to hide it. Hear me, both are valid options. It is never appropriate for anyone to feel as though they have the right to that information and it is never appropriate or necessary for you to feel that you are obligated to tell someone that information. So the bottom line of this video is if someone is going to allow you to know information about them, then you as the receiver of information need to handle that appropriately. You need to handle that not with your own filter of why things are right or wrong. Even just today, I heard another story from a friend, them knowing their orientation ages ago, and then had a friend who told them, no, it was wrong and it was gross and they were probably going to go to hell. So they're like, oh, I don't want to go to hell. So they spent a lot of years and damaged a lot of relationships trying to be somebody they weren't. And then when they realized who they were and went back to who they were, they still carried that burden. Don't make people carry that burden. So the reason why people come out typically fall into two categories, either because they feel safe or because they feel threatened. And I would always want to be on the safe side, right? I would always want to be creating a safe space where people can tell me the realities of who they are without fear of judgment, without fear of correction, and without, yeah, without fear, period. No fear. I would always rather be a safe space for someone than to be the one who put them in a situation where they felt so threatened that they were obligated to reveal something about themselves that they kept hidden for a reason. No one ever has any right 
to your body or your mind. Your emotions are your own, your feelings are your own, your thoughts are your own, and your body is your own. And you get to decide what happens with it. And that is across the board, but it's it's significant to this process of coming out and revealing who you are because the person who holds that information back from people holds it back for a reason. You are not that person and you might not know their reason, which means you do not get to weigh in on whether their reason is valid. My hope for everybody is we get to a place at some point in my lifetime maybe that it's not necessary for people to qualify who they are, qualify who they're attracted to, or qualify really anything about themselves besides the fact that they are human beings and as a human being, they are worthy of dignity and they are worthy of love and they are worthy of wholeness. Until we get to that point, I would really encourage all of you to consider yourselves allies to create safe spaces where you're not pushing people into revealing themselves when they don't want to. I would encourage everyone in the community to find safe spaces where if you want to, if you ever want to, when you want to, and how you want to, you are owning the revelation of yourself. I would encourage anyone who does not fall into one of those categories to really spend some time thinking about where your lines are and what is, in your opinion, appropriate for someone to be forced into revealing about themselves and what is not. Because I think we probably all have some stuff in us that we don't necessarily want to reveal because we're aware of how people take it. We lived it and we understand it and we know the context, but sharing the context is hard, right? I think there's a big chance that everybody out there has some stuff that they want to be able to choose when and if to reveal. And because of that, I would encourage you to treat everyone else like they have some stuff that they can decide when and if to reveal. The psychological reason behind coming out is a desire to be a whole person, a desire to not have to split pieces of yourself out, and a desire to move forward into a higher rung of self-actualization. So if somebody does let you in on that information, it's kind of an honor. It's kind of a big deal minimizing it or shrugging it away or ignoring it or denying it, all of those things have less than productive outcomes when it comes to the person you're talking to. And I would assume that if the person is revealing this information to you, there's somebody who is significant to you and you're probably significant to them. So it kind of comes down to the question, those who are receiving the information of what is more important to you, the relationship, the person in front of you, or you. There's no wrong answer there, honestly. And I would say the same thing to anybody out there who is in the community. I would absolutely say to you, you get to decide when and where and how you give that information out. If a response you get from someone is less than favorable, I would suggest you spend a little bit of time thinking, what is most important here? And what am I gaining by having this person in my life? And what am I potentially losing by having this person in my life? So there you have it, psychology of coming out. A couple of tips for those of you who are blessed enough to be involved in the revelation of someone's truth. And I would really encourage everyone to remember that you and only you have the rights to what you think and feel and know. And people don't get to take that from you just because they might not agree. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you're all staying safe and being careful with each other and with yourselves. Take rests, drink lots of water. And tune in next week for another topic. If you have a topic that you want me to address in one of these videos, please drop it in the comments or message me and let me know. I would love to talk about anything that you want me to talk about. Have a great one.